right. So it's quarantine. We're all getting thirsty, but we're all on a budget. People are always asking me, what wines should I get from the grocery store? So I finally popped off at the grocery store, picked up some wines, dropped a few of them off at one of my favorite winos houses, and we decided to taste and see how they were. All right, let's drink some wine. Okay, so people ask me all the time, what wines should I get from the grocery store? And the truth is, I don't really know because honestly, I don't ever get wines from the grocery store. And it's not because I'm bougie, it's because I have a wine bar. So obviously, I'm going to take my work home with me. She's and also drink- a little bougie. <laughs> and drink that wine. I mean, what are we opening? Okay, well, we're going to start with the bubbles. Okay. I'm not, I'm like snob light. Like, I'll never judge anybody for what they drink, uh, but maybe I'll be a little bit snobby about what I drink. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so woo. Uh, so this is, what's cool about this is we both have a cava. Okay. So this is Frejeune. This is super ubiquitous. You can find this at the grocery store. You can probably find this at CVS. Uh, and this is a cava. So cava is Spanish sparkling wine. So champagne is French oh. sparkling wine. Prosecco is Italian sparkling wine. Cava is Spanish sparkling wine. And it's made the same way as champagne, but it's really, really affordable. It's I'm a struggle. <laughs> Hold on one second. More inexpensive. <laughs> Woo! Wait. How much was that bottle? Do you know? So all these bottles were under $10. I think this was eight. Um, and then the other ones were like nine or nine ninety nine, but they were all under ten. I swear, I drank that thinking that was the fancy one. So clearly, I am classless. <laughs> well, it, it bodes well for uh, okay. So your cava is um, a vintage cava, which is just like a little bit nicer. Um, it's from a much smaller producer. So in wine, when when uh, we have mass production. That is really like the problem with grocery store wines. Um, And you can just think about it the same way you think about food. Like, would you rather eat a burger that was, you know, grass-fed beef, handmade, you know, was made by this guy named Joe who went to chef school and he's got artisanal cheese, or do you want McDonald's? Is Joe hot? (laughs) He's hot, but he doesn't wash his hands enough. (laughs) I guess this is silly, but I'm going to taste the fancy one. So, I mean, right away I get all those sort of like toasty notes. Like, what do you smell? I know nothing about wine. No, that, that's totally, so the thing about wine is like, it's, it is totally subjective, right? So if you smell, if you are like, this smells like oak to me, that smells like oak to you. I can't argue with that, right? Yeah. Like, it's totally subjective. But then there are some things in wine that are not subjective, like, like everyone has agreed that Pinot Noir has red fruit, which means you're probably going to get strawberry you're probably going to get cherry. Like, so there are these markers in wine that are not subjective, but if you're like, this smells like this, this reminds me of my grandma's perfume or whatever. That's, that's totally. Can't take that away from me. Exactly. Okay. So mine smells like that. Mine smells like a little toasty. It smells like a little citrus. Do you get any fruit notes? Like anything fruity? (laughs) Grapes. Great. Do you like it? Yeah, it's light, it's fruity, it's pretty clean. Now, okay, other than that, just being mass produced, like you said, which is why the price point goes down, like this bottle that I'm drinking here versus your bottle, is one going to give us a hangover more than the other? Like, is there a correlation between cheap wine and hangovers? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think so. And I feel like, so there's this whole like natural wine movement right now, which is wines that really have like very low sulfur, like no additives, organic, you know. But the truth is, if you drink a bottle of that shit or two bottles of that shit, like you're going to be hungover anyway. Right. So I'm sure there is some kind of correlation between like the sugar, if there are additives or there is like, you know preservatives like that kind of garbage I'm sure that's not great for you if this isn't like the bottom of the barrel here that you're drinking well when we're talking about wine that could be a good thing that was like wine humor that was like nerdy wine uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. 
Uh, no. Um, so this Frégené, uh, it is like one of the largest producers for the Cava Dio, which is just a fancy way to say like the, the people who regulate, like if you can call your wine Cava. Um, so it is big production. But in terms of value, uh, so all sparkling wines made like a little bit differently, but this is made the same way that champagne is made. So it is made in like a quality method. Um, I think it's really refreshing. It's clean. It doesn't taste overly sweet to me, which is my big hang up a lot of the time with cheap wine. This does not taste sweet to me. It's like really refreshing. I'm going to give this, what should we rate them on? Oh, a 10 point scale. All right, sure. I have For how no much of the bottle you would drink? <laughs> I would take this and will take this. Tonight. I love any sparkly. I love a sparkle. I thought that was the fancy bottle and it tasted great to me. So I would give it, you know, 10 points. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, even the bottle that I gave you, like we sell that bottle for $25. So sure, that's a lot more expensive than eight bucks. But in terms of like a quality, sparkling, beautiful wine that you could even like let that bottle sit for, I mean, that's so much easier said than done. Most people don't fucking let wine sit, right? You take it home and you drink it. But if you <laughs> yeah. wanted to, if you decided, fuck it, I'm going to start cellaring my wine, you could let a bottle like that one that I gave you like sit for five years and it would be delicious. Oh, okay. What would you give that? I would give this like, I'm going seven out of 10. I think it's pretty tasty. I mean, heck yeah. Also, I feel like that that's good to know for like, if you're throwing a brunch or if you're throwing like a bridal shower, because that stuff gets expensive. That's way better than like a Corbel, right? Yeah, for sure. Although Corbel, interestingly, like out of all the cheap brands, Corbel is also made the way champagne is made. If you get like, do you know Wycliffe? Have you ever seen Wycliffe? Yeah, that's like a- Or like the Andre. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Like, yes, yes Andre. Yeah. So the cheapest, shittiest way you can make sparkling wine is just like soda. You literally have wine and then you throw some CO2 in it. That's oh. like how the, like if you see a bottle of sparkling wine that's three dollars, five bucks and under, that they probably, that's how they made it. Um, but that is not how this is made at all. This is made in the like fancy champagne method. That's like Corbel has a huge tasting room in. Yeah, they're like OGs in California. They've been yeah. here forever, which is why I think their bottles still say champagne because that you're not allowed to do that. But there were like these companies that were sort of grandfathered in because they've been doing it long enough that the, the people who regulate all those labels were kind of like, okay, fine. You, you and you can keep doing it, but like nobody else can do it. Okay. Because okay. champagne is a place. It's not a thing. It's a place. So if you label it, the people in Champagne are like, fuck that shit. Like, that's ours. You can't call your shit Champagne. You got to call your shit California or whatever, you know? Oh, so. interesting. Okay. Is it sacrilege that I'm drinking out of a plastic cup? I figured if we were doing cheap wine, I had to do it out of a cheap glass. No. I mean, whatever is <laughs> – they're not breakable. <laughs> I just know myself. I'm trying to protect myself. All right. Well, I'm Should we try number down. two? Yeah. Oh, she's a pro. I'm going to save this. Okay. So next up, we've got, pun intended, uh, we've got Joel Gott. Sav Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I don't really know much about this. I know this is another one that you can find all over. Why, as you grab this one, as I'm assuming there was tons of options for cheap white wine. Oh, okay. So this I will say. One of the reasons I grabbed this was because it was $10 and not $5. So even, even though, like, if you when we talk about like additives or the shit that might make you feel bad or like just that big mass production, I mean, I'm sure this is still big mass production, but yeah. like three, bo like a $3 bottle, that four four ninety nine bottle. Like I just can't with that. Like that is where I'm like, Oh, if you're drinking, yeah. Like if you're drinking to get drunk, I mean, you do you, no judgment. I used to drink Gorton's vodka in college and I drank a lot of it. Yeah. But uh, now I'm like, oh, like I want something that's affordable, but I still don't want like shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
Where'd you get this stuff from? I got all of this at Vons. Okay. So why this one? Just because of the, it was like- Yeah, it was just like the selection. And then like in that price point, in that sort of like $10, $12, I was like, okay, what? And then it just looked, and I knew this would be something that people could probably find pretty easily. Okay. I'm not a white wine drinker at all, but I'm excited to try this. Great. I just find it usually is like really sweet. and Pop her open. Yucky after. Okay. My grandma loves her white wine. It looks good? Looks great. Looks great. Oh, see, it smells great. Really? It smells like cat litter to me. Lisa, you're a secret psalm. Really? Yes, you think you're bad at this. Did you know that Sauvignon Blanc, one of the tells, so like all of us wine nerds like to get together and we literally smell wine and taste wine and try to guess what it is like for fun and to further our education. Like we're cute. fucking You guys are crazy. Cute. Um, one of the tells of Sauvignon Blanc is cat pee. Really? Kitty litter. I'm not kidding. There's something in it. There's something in the smell that if you smell it, Oh, delicious. Yeah, I know. Well, then now I don't, my stomach's churning. Okay, so does it also smell like, if we could maybe put that thought like in the back of our minds, does it also kind of smell like passion fruit and grapefruit and green grass? Okay. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. (laughs) That definitely helps. Okay, great. It's yeah, actually to me, really like, nice. the first thing right away to me is I was like, oh, it's super tropical, like passion fruit, pineapple, okay, uh, peaches. I it's very fruity. Like yeah. It's super smooth. Like, I'm shocked at how, like, smooth it is. Smooth. Uh, I just caught a little, I caught a little um, wisp of the back here, and it says, long clean finish and I thought isn't that what we're all isn't that what we all want is a nice long clean long finish clean finish <laughs> this is good it yeah, is, is a long clean finish is okay I have no point of reference in terms of white wine and Sauv Blancs but what do you think yeah it's pretty tasty um Sauvignon Blanc in general is a high acid grape so it's going to be one of those wines that makes your mouth water so versus like something sweet or like you're like, oh, I don't like it. Sometimes it's sweet. Sauvignon Blancs in general are like a good bet because they're going to be crisp and they're going to be dry. Oh, is that what that is? Dry. It's like. Dry is just a, fa- <laughs> honestly, it's just a fancy word to be like, it's not sweet. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I actually like this. I feel like mine's not cold enough. I like want to put it back in, but I feel like, is it also sacrilege to put like fruit inside here like I want to make like a spritzer um no I I'm obsessed with spritzers I love them I put a I put a don't tell my psalm friends this I put a ice cube in my pinot grigio yesterday <laughs> it's just yes it's that's hot. how my grandma does it that's how my grandma does it and I love that um okay so with this wine it tastes fine like, I think it has really pretty perfume, but in terms of, like, a really good one, like, if I, like, if I put this right next to, like, a really well-structured Sauvignon Blanc, I do think it's, yeah. like, missing something on the finish. Oh, interesting. Does the average wine consumer give a fuck about, like, oh, was it, like, quite structured well? No. For $9, I think this is great. I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. Wait, this is great to know. My girlfriends love a Sav Blanc. Everyone, if you need one, not bad. But now I want to try a good one, which I think we were talking about uh, gifting a friend of mine a bunch of Sav Blanc mm-hmm. once her baby arrives. So I'll be interested to try the difference. But not bad, right? Yeah, not too shabby. I think it smells better than it tastes. Cat pee, man. But I don't think it's, like, bad. I'm washing it down with the percent. <laughs> the bubbles. <laughs> yeah. The oh, cup. yeah. I guess I do have two glasses. I could. That's really funny. I'm cleansing the palate with some more wine. <laughs> that cava. This one's real good. Okay. I do like a rose, and it's also my fiance's favorite. And I feel like 
we've gotten this before. They have this at Trader Joe's. Yeah, they've got this at Trader Joe's. Again, these wines, all you'll find them all over the place. So these are the Charles Smith wines. You'll see the cans all over. They're like the house wines. I've tried a few of the cans. I do these like canned wine reviews. And the cans that I've tried have been very good. Um, he makes like, yeah, just sort of grocery store brand. He's out of Washington. So all these wines are coming out of Washington. Um, they're like, yeah, they're like everywhere. They're like no must, no fuss. Like all the labels are really like fun and easy. I'm such a sucker for labels. I feel like, like it's hard to not buy according to the cool label. Yeah. I mean, of course, right. That's their job in marketing is to like give you a label that's going to make you want to buy the wine. It just feels like hip and young. But just be wary that um, a lot of time and money went into like making the label, which means that time and money didn't go into wake making the wine. So sometimes it's great. And then sometimes like, I don't want to shit on any brands, but if you see a brand everywhere and the billboards are everywhere and it's like, you know, the, the center aisle at your grocery store and it's at, like, they put a lot of money into the marketing which Got means it. they maybe didn't put a lot of money into, into the, the production. Line. Got yeah. it. So oh, I think I'm getting a little bit drunk. I, I think love it's it. I think it has come. Okay, wait, how much was this? Do we know? Uh, again, I think I think this one was like nine ninety nine. She will not do her three two buck chuck. Why do we swirl? Oh, great question. Uh, it's so you can look really like you know what you're doing in my plastic cup. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh it's because like 80% of what you're enjoying in wine comes from the smell versus the taste. You really only taste like sweet, salty, bitter, tannin, those kinds of things. Um and you do have like some smell receptors in the back of your throat, but pretty much everything is coming from what you're smelling. Mm. So when you swirl it, you're just like adding a little bit of oxygen into the wine to get all of those smell molecules to like pop up, wake up and, and give you all that pleasure. Oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Now is this, um, cause like rosés are like different blend. It's a blend, right? A rosé is a blend. So wine gets its color from the skins of the grape. So, uh, champagne, not cava, cava actually uses white grapes, but champagne, the majority of the grapes they use are red grapes, but the wine that you get at the end is white, right? And that's because there's no skin contact. They don't use the skins in the winemaking process. Okay. Because all the color is going to come from the skin. So with rosé, there's like a few different ways that you can make it, but basically it just had like a little bit of skins instead of full skins, which means it would have been a red wine. But sometimes it's like, oh, it's a Pinot rosé. Sometimes it's, a, it could be, they can literally make rosé out of any grape that has red skin. So it could be a Pinot it. Noir, it could be. But does that change the flavor? Yeah, of course. A okay. little bit, for sure. All right. And Everything then, smells like, like cat pee to me. I know, I just keep burping from that kava. I'm like, uh, And then also, like, where it's from, how they made it. Like, wine is really a recipe the same way that food is. So there are so many factors that go into it. If you say, like, oh, I really like chili, but then you try, like, my grandma's chili versus some guy who lives in Texas's chili versus, like, there's just so many factors that go into it. So to be, like, oh, this wine will always taste the same. It's like, there's so many different recipes out there. Got it. This was a little alarming at first taste for some reason. Alarming. It's like really like. Uh, so on the, what do you smell before you even taste it? I mean, it's all, all I smell now is cat pee, but. I have allergies. I can't smell anything. It like, smells super, to me, it smells super creamy. It smells like strawberries and cream. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it tastes like that a little bit too. It's a little sour or something. Ooh, look at her just mouthwash it. It's super light. Like there's a lot going on on the nose and then on the palate, you're right. It's like, I don't love it. And I usually like rosé. Do you like it? I love it. You do, I, you do. Yeah, but you know why I think I might like it and you 
might not because it's super high acid. So oh. it's like very light on the palate. And then like that, that last sort of flavor in my mouth is just like, is that why I went like, you're right. It's like sour. It's like, yeah, it's like lemon. Like the last finish is like lemon candy. Interesting. But I like that because I'm an acid freak. So I'm like, oh yeah, I, I'm into that. Whereas I yeah. can see how for somebody else, you might want like an extra layer of like fruitiness on the palate in addition to on the I think so. I think this was a little shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel shocked. I'll still drink it though. It smells good. I'm getting used to it now. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. Yeah, it doesn't. Wine tasting is so confusing. It starts to all like kind of feel the same. Oh, for sure. For right? sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's like a language like anything else. Like I do it all the time. So I'm like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. Or I'll taste through all these wines and, and you're like honed in. Yeah. Or I mean, but I think that it is like, it's a, super intimidating for people because they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know anything. It's like, you know, everything. You are literally the person that everybody's trying to sell wine to. So, you know, everything, you know, what you like, you know, what you don't like. And even if you don't know how to verbalize it, you know, just practice a little bit. Like yeah. if you are like, oh, I like this or, oh, I don't like this. Like, just try to kind of figure out how and why that is so that the next time you go to a restaurant or a wine shop, you can say, oh, I know I like this and I know I don't like this because then somebody who knows wine can be like, oh, cool. You're going to love this bottle. You're going to hate this bottle. So don't be intimidated because the worst thing that's going to happen at the end of the day is you got a bottle of wine. And it's all good. Yeah. I mean, I would say like just for cheap wines, this wasn't a bad go. No, I don't think so at all. I mean, I would give this another like 6.5 out of 10. Not bad. Yeah. I, I mean, again, like I have no like point of reference, but my fiance will down this tonight and he will like it. So Great. we'll give it a seven out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> because it'll just keep his, it'll keep him off your back for a little bit. Yeah, and, exactly. And that gives it one extra point. <laughs> um, for the general public that's watching, when you do go to a CVS or, you know, a Vons or whatever, what are we, what are we looking for? You kind of already mentioned maybe not getting the $3 wine, but beyond that, like, what do you, what do you look for to get a yeah, cheap I wine? Mean, that the biggest advice that I could give is like, don't go to the grocery store or don't go to CVS. If you have the luxury of a wine shop, even if it's just like BevMo or, um, you know, what's the one in Pasadena, the wine, um, another big one. I do know Trader Joe's. I feel even like Trader. Yeah. Have even Trader Joe's. So the biggest thing that I would say is you're going to find a lot more value, a lot more bang for your buck outside of the United States. So Portuguese wines, Spanish wines, like you're just going to get a better product for less money. Um, and that's for like a number of reasons that we could go into in another video, but, uh, so I would say if you have the luxury, go to a wine shop and be like, look, I got 15 bucks. Give me the best thing you got, you know? Uh, and you're just going to get a better product than if you go to the grocery store. If you don't have that luxury and you're like, dude, ain't got a wine shop in my town. We've got, you know, one I'm, I'm looking at Safeway or whatever to get my wine. Then, um, then like I said, I would try to just experiment and figure out what you like, what you don't like. And then also a little trick is, the, the smallest denomination you can get the wine down to usually equates to higher quality. So if the wine says that it's from California, that's like a really big area. Oh. If the wine says like it's from Santa Barbara, that's a little bit smaller of an area. If it says it's from Los Olivos, that's like even smaller. If it says it's from a single vineyard, then you know you're getting a product where the people are like, oh, That's this great is our, advice. our single vineyard wine. Like we're really handling this very carefully, you know? So that is a little cheat. Like the, the smaller you can get the area is usually, usually equates to, to quality. In wine, there's okay. always a, an exception to the rule, but in general. I think that's great. Cheers to you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> what are you revisiting out of these three? The bubbles, for sure. 
Yeah. In fact, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab yeah. my bubbles glass. I'm going to refill. Dude, I'm going to be asleep in 10 minutes. <laughs> I have a lot of chores to do. Well, I mean. This is my day off, Lisa. So I've got <laughs> chores to do. I've got like, you. I'm not going to pan out from this shot, but it's like really fucked up. It's like right here looks crisp and clean. And then if I just like switched the camera, you would see like my pile of dirty dishes. Yes. <laughs> but you know what? Chores are so much better when you're a little drunk. <laughs> Yeah, and blast, blast some tunes. Yeah. Well, I have many questions to ask you. So shall we hop over to my channel and get going? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cheers. Thanks for having me. Thank you.